The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by Martha Tilton and the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with the National Emblem March. Cross speak last night. He was asking for money. He said in part... Ladies and gentlemen, I heard an officer of the Red Cross speak last night. He was asking for money. He said in part that it was customary these days to press demands upon them will be great. But we are a great nation. So let's give till it hurts. Urgently and immediately. Now for 130 million people, that's the price of a few cigars or a lipstick. The Red Cross is always ready to help in times of war and disaster. And from now on, the demands upon them will be great. But we are a great nation. So let's give till it... Bitten but triumphant, we find that lumberjack. <laughs> the master of 79 Wistful Vista is not one to squander a buck and a quarter for a Christmas tree when he can drive out to the woods and chop down his own. No, sir. <laughs> and here, driving up to the house, frost bitten but triumphant, we find that lumberjack who saves Jack on his lumber. them brakes fixed. <laughs> Boy, am I cold. Ah, well, come on, Christmas tree. Come to Papa. You got a new home. Oh. Oh. McGee, you're getting snow all over the hall. Why didn't you stamp your feet? Why should I stamp my feet? I ain't mad at anybody. <laughs> Besides, they're so cold, I'm just walking from memory. Oh. <laughs> Here, you poor lad. Let me take your coat. Shorty. And I says, yeah, I says, tossing my hatchet up in the air and catching it by the handle. <laughs> Try and get it, I says. You don't need this tree for last Christmas, I says. And he says, oh, did you actually fight for it, dearie? Oh, it didn't come down to actual brawl, no. One guy ups to me and says, that's my tree, Shorty. And I says, yeah, I says, tossing my hatchet up in the air and catching it by the handle. <laughs> get it, I says. You don't need this tree for last Christmas, I says. And he says, what do you mean last Christmas? Well, I says, sinister-like, advancing toward him with a nasty look, you lay a blade on that... So I just sneered and walked away. Double time. Ah, good for you, McGee. Did he go away then? No. Started swinging his axe at me. <laughs> and just then I noticed that this tree, which was a little farther along and was even bigger and better. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I just sneered and walked away. Double time. <laughs> well, next spring when the snow melts, I'll get... Oh, my gosh. What's that? Oh, it's that window. <laughs> Shut now, Molly. Just because... What took you so long to get it home? You know, you've been gone six hours. Well, I had a blowout on the way back and had to stop and buy a new second-hand tire. Oh. Cost me seven bucks. Oh. Where's the hatchet? I lost it in the snow. But I know just where it is, and next spring when the snow melts, I'll get... Oh, my gosh. What's that? Oh, it's that window in the dining room. I opened it because it was so hot in here, and it won't stay open. No. Oh. Well, I'll fix it when I get time. By the way, what time is it? It's after four. Why? Where's your wristwatch? Well, I took it off to chop this tree down and forgot all about it. Oh. <laughs> then when I went back to look for it, moth-eating shrubs they're selling downtown. When I want a tree, I want a tree, not a bouquet. A $2 hatchet and a $7 tie. 
$39 for a 98-cent Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, happy Yuletide. <laughs> Well, I didn't want one of those measly little moth-eaten shrubs they're selling downtown. When I want a tree, I want a tree, not a bouquet. Come in. Oh, hello, Mayor Latrivia. Ah, uh, good day, Mrs. McGee. I say, McGee. Yes? About that job you wanted in the city hall. I'm still working on it, but I'll have to have a little information. Well, tell the nice mayor what he wants to know, dearie. Okay. Dig me, little the detective force of Wistful Vista. I order you to make way there. Stand back, everybody. The oh, police... Uh, <clears throat> this wouldn't be a police job, McGee. Oh. But one of the elevator operators has just been drafted. Crowds of people all asking you questions. Can you ignore the whispers behind your back? Can you give orders in a loud tone of authority? Boy, can I. Listen to this, Triv. All right, folks. As captain of the detective force of Wistful Vista, I order you to make way there. Stand back, everybody. The oh, police... Uh, <clears throat> this wouldn't be a police job, McGee. Oh. But one of the elevator operators has just been drafted, and I've suggested you. <laughs> I'll let you know later. A good day. <laughs> Why, that small-minded, boat-grabbing baby... <laughs> Is at present sleeping its edge off under a snowdrift 18 miles north of town. Yeah, well, we got a saw, haven't we? Not a very good one. It's all bent. Who bent it? You did. Huh? After you saw that vaudeville act at the Bijou last... Uh... Get me a hatchet, will you? The hatchet, dear boy, according to your official communique... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is at present sleeping its edge off under a snowdrift 18 miles north of town. Yeah, well, we got a saw, haven't we? Not a very good one. It's all bent. Who bent it? You did. Huh? After you saw that vaudeville act at the Bijou last uh, October, you tried to play Pony Boy on it, remember? <laughs> well, I guess it'll still work. Say, it's awful hot in here. Yes, it is. I'll open that dining room window again. Okay. The thermostat on the furnace is out of order, and I've got to get a... Boy, am I tired. Ah, but what a tree. Why, this will give us enough kindling wood for all summer. Thing, Mert. Huh? Who? Your niece. Somebody grabbed her and kissed her during the... Our little ornaments are going to look awful silly on it. Yeah, I never thought of that. I'd better order a bigger assortment of ornaments. Now, hand me the phone, will you? Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the wistful vista novelty and day. Oh, is that you, Mert? <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? Huh? Who? Your niece. Somebody grabbed her and kissed her during the blackout. Oh, heavenly days, McGee. Does she know who it was? She'll recognize him when she sees him. He'll have <laughs> lipstick all over his face, neck, and shirt front. <laughs> From just one kiss? What do you mean, one kiss? That blackout lasted three hours. Tarzan. Who? I said Tarzan. Who? Oh, stop it, McGee. That's I not didn't say funny. anything. You says Tarzan. Who? Tarzan. Who are you shouting at? Who? 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 Hey, what the... McGee, it's an owl. He's in that tree. Huh? Look, up on the fourth branch. And trim out a hundred or so branches. Tarzan or somebody might be hiding in there. Who? Tarzan. Who? I said Tarzan. Who? Oh, stop it, McGee. That's I didn't say funny. anything. You says Tarzan. Who? Tarzan. Who are you shouting at? Who? 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 Hey, what the... McGee, it's an owl. He's in that tree. Huh? Look, up on the fourth branch. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Shake the tree, Molly. Open the door and we'll shoo him out. Who? You! <laughs> Come on, get out of that, you big buzzard. Go on, scram. Hey. Get harder, McGee. There he goes. Chase him, Molly. Chase him this way. Put out, put out, put out. <laughs> He won't even look at me, McGee. Well, owls don't see good in the daytime. Well, what do you expect me to do? Buy him some glasses? Hey, who? There he goes. Go on. Beat it. Scram. Woo-hoo. <laughs> well, thank goodness. Those things give me the creep. <laughs> me too. Though I will say it was decent of him to back up my judgment. What are you talking about? Well, owls are wise birds, and we both picked out the same tree. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I don't know if you could come out and play. Some of us kids are building a snow fort in that vacant lot up on the corner, having a peck of fun. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. We've got work to do, Mr. Oldtimer. I'm afraid you left a romp in the snow without No. Us. <laughs> we buy our firewood on the hook, Mr. Oldtimer. What's on your mind besides that Daniel Boone cap, Oldtimer? Just wanted to know if you could come out and play. Some of us kids are building a snow fort in that vacant lot up on the corner, 
Having to pick a fun. Oh. <laughs> no, thank you. We've got work to do, Mr. Oldtimer. I'm afraid you'll have to romp in the snow without us. Oh, gee, kids, come on. <laughs> We wanted to choose up sides and play Yanks and Japs. Only nobody wants to be a Jap. <laughs> hey, what was that? Oh, it's just the dining room window, Mr. Oldtimer. It won't stay open. Hey? Who? Well, <clears throat> we are here it. One feller says, tell a feller, say, he says. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I hear it. Oh. The way I hear it. What was that? Oh, it's just the dining room window, Mr. Oldtimer. It won't stay open. He? Who? Well, <clears throat> way I hear it. One fella says, tell a fella, say, <laughs> Thank your lucky stars and stripes. If you... He's just from a beer garden. Well, says tell a fella, that's so when he starts foaming at the mouth, nobody will notice it. <laughs> Martha Tilton sings Thank Your Lucky Stars and Stripes. If you live right, you like the good old Yankee way, so say so. If you can sing and believe in anything, you can thank your lucky, you can thank your lucky stars and stripes. Steam heat and ham and eggs and hay rides and cider kegs if you like the good old Yankee way, so say so. If you can sing and believe in anything, you can thank your lucky stars and stripes. If there's fun on Dollar Day, you can thank your lucky stars and stripes. If you can joke and enjoy an art of show, well, well, if life is gay, if there's fun on Dollar Day, you can thank your lucky stars and stripes. You can joke and enjoy an artichoke. You can thank your lucky stars and stripes. Oh, they cut down the old pine tree and they hold stars. Cut down the old pine tree And they hauled it away to the mill To make an eye Well, yeah. listen now, try and be a little quieter Uncle Dennis is upstairs taking a steak Do you have to sing with your sawing? No, I don't have to, but it helps Hey, how's it look now, Molly? Beginning to shape up pretty good, eh? Yes, if you like that shape <laughs> It's pretty lopsided It is? Where? Oh, oh yeah Sure Well, I can trim that side off a little more it's a good thing I got a big tree to start with, you know what? Well, yeah. listen now, try and be a little quieter. Uncle Dennis is upstairs taking a nap. That guy's always taking a nap. Anybody I ever knew. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, I cut down the old pine tree, and I hauled it away in my car. McGee, uh, there's somebody at the door. Who? I don't know. Let me see. Now, now, let's not start on poor Uncle Dennis uh, again. He's a gentleman and a scholar. He ought to be a scholar. He's had more teachers than anybody I ever knew. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, I cut down the old pine tree, and I hauled it away in my car. McGee, uh, there's somebody at the door. Who? I don't know. Let me see. Oh, it's Mrs. Uppington. Oh, not the Mrs. Uppington. The choicest crumb in our upper crust. Yeah. And wearing a hat that was made in a hurry by a cross-eyed milliner wearing boxing gloves. <laughs> Come in, Abigail, darling. I'd say that if I carried my handkerchief in my sleeve. <laughs> say, I didn't know you were such a lover of the great open spaces, Abigail. Oh, my dear. I used to simply send all... I simply adore the scent of freshly cut lumber, really. It's so invigorating and so... 
so outdoorsy, you might say. <laughs> yeah. 